Today, blame the family bank for higher home prices. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news. Well, according to a recent Domain article, the property market reached unexpected heights last year thanks to the bank of mum and dad, which helped buoy prices when they were forecast to keep falling. And they went on to say conventional economic wisdom suggests high interest rates should have pushed property prices lower, but the opposite happened surprising even the best economic minds in the country. Family help, they say, combined with other factors that boosted the market, such as the dearth of homes listed for sale, false hope, the interest rate rises were finished, and purchases from cash buyers who built up equity in the boom drove last year's V-shaped recovery. In fact, national home values fell 7.5% during the downturn of 2022, but then regained their losses by November last year on CoreLogic figures, although Sydney and Melbourne remain below their peaks. And although the scale of the bank of mum and dad is hard to quantify, a string of signs showed its impact last year. Now, at this point, I want to segue across to my own analysis, because, of course, in my surveys, the bank of mum and dad, or more formally, I think we should call it now, the family bank, as we'll see, is an important factor in the property market. So let's look at the latest data from my surveys. We're going to start by looking at the estimated number of the bank of mum and dad facilitated transactions for first-time buyers and what proportion of those first-time buyers were seeking the bank of mum and dad help. And here is the first data point. So you can see that at December 2023, and this is a rolling quarterly number, the number of bank-assisted first-time buyers, assisted by the family bank, was significantly higher, well over 15,000 over the quarter. And that translated to 56.7% of first-time buyers transacting, which is a significant rise from where we were a few months ago and approaching the high levels that we saw when it was 60% around August 2020 through to June 2021. The next thing we can look at is the average size of a deposit. And again, on my data, the average size of help when the money was effectively transferred in the bank of mum and dad to the first time borrower was around 104000 Dollars. Now it's spread differently across different states and different types of transactions, some much lower, some higher. But nevertheless, that average is pretty much up there, close to those peaks reached in the June 21 quarter. Now, the other interesting question here, and why I've called this the family bank rather than just the bank of mum and dad, is because whilst parents are providing about 82 0.36% of the help. Actually, grandparents are now providing significant help, actually, in the latest numbers, around 12.46%. And other family members, which can include siblings and other more distant relatives, are also in the mix with about 5%. So you can see here now that we should more formally call it the family bank rather than the bank of mum and dad. One other point is to see where the bank of mum and dad or the family bank is stacked compared with other lenders. In fact, of course, you'd expect CBA, Westpac, National Australia Bank and ANZ to be leading the charge, plus Macquarie and ING and then Bendigo and Adelaide, the Bank of Queensland and Suncorp. And the bank of mum and dad or the family bank is now estimated as around $36.6 .6 billion, and that still puts them in 10th place. Of course, it's not reported in any of the official numbers. And then we have a number of smaller organisations that are still lending, but whose total portfolios are significantly below the bank of mum and dad. In other words, the bank of mum and dad, or the family bank, 
is a very significant element within the story of what's going on with the market. And that takes us straight back to the domain article. So they said that the bank of mum and dad is hard to quantify, but there are a string of signs that shows its potential impact. So mortgage brokers, they say, and agents reported more anecdotal evidence of cash gifts, not only becoming commonplace, but also growing in sizable sums to the order of around $100,000 or higher. And the level of debt taken on relative to home values fell to a record low, according to Carlos Queixo, chief economist at Jardin Australia. Jardin previously forecast house prices would fall by around 20 to 25%, but Keicho said no one considered how the bank of mum and dad would react as the Reserve Bank kicked off its most aggressive rate rising cycle in more than a decade. Several bank economists, which they contacted, could not regularly model the funds transfer from the bank of mum and dad when forecasting house price growth. They just don't have the data. And it's actually quite convenient, of course, because a number of banks don't do sufficient due diligence as to where the funds come from. Not least because we know that the average banker mum and dad assisted borrower is about three times more likely to default in the subsequent five years. And they don't really want to know that, do they? Now, what Domain said was what we didn't account for was, I think, the impact of the shift in sentiment that the RBA turning a bit more dovish would have, Keicho said. Jardin concluded from surveying mortgage brokers that about 15% of borrowers were using some form of family assistance to buy a home, receiving on average $92,000 from their parents. And if we assume the majority of first-time home buyers, that would imply about 75% of first home buyers were receiving some form of family assistance, he said, noting that it was up from 60% in 2017 and 12% in 2010. And those long-term trends chime with my own analysis. The true scale of it now is potentially even bigger. When you look at the big capital cities, it certainly feels like it's the key driver of the housing market, he said. And Equilibria Finance Managing Director and Mortgage Broker, Anthony Landau, said the Bank of Mom and Dad stepped in last year in different pockets of Sydney as the deposit challenge was exacerbated by reduced borrowing power. It did become more commonplace, Landau said. It's mainly with those people who are trying to get into their first home, and we sometimes see it with upgraders too. And he said the trend of family guarantee loans was now overtaken by cash gifts, which ranged from $50,000 to $500,000, but $100,000 is roughly the average cash gift in his experience, he said. Again, very close to my own analysis. They're not an insignificant amount. They're a major contributor of the overall funding of buyers. The Bank of Mum and Dad partly, therefore, explains the growing gap between property prices and levels of debt. But family support also helped push prices higher despite a dramatic fall in buyers' borrowing capacity, said Dr Shane Oliver, the Chief Economist of the AMP. They were closing the gap between what the bank was willing to lend and the price of housing, Oliver said. It has been a real phenomenon over the course of the past couple of years. It's a factor for many years, but it seemed to have taken off in 2023. Oliver said it created a bigger pool of buyers who were less rate sensitive last year and ultimately helped buoy the market. The secret weapon they had was their parents' financing. The question is whether that group has been depleted for this year. And with affordability unlikely to improve in a meaningful way, the driving force of the bank of mum and dad behind last year's V-shaped recovery was here to stay, according to Thomas McGlynn, the chief executive of Bresk Whitney. It's going to continue to play out in a big part of this country, in areas where baby boomers have spent a lot of time in the market, McGlynn said. We've already seen a large transfer of wealth through property from baby boomers onto the next generations. That has been one of the biggest drivers of why we saw prices rise in 2023. Any parent would want to help their children to get into property, but you can't deny it has played a part in strengthening the property market. Now, I think there's a very important truth here, and that is that if you were fortunate enough to be a first-time buyer with parents 
sitting on maybe paper wealth, thanks to property price rises, then parents or other family members will try to assist. But of course, it does create a greater division between those with and without family wealth. But the other point I want to leave you with is that this is no longer to be called the bank of mum and dad. It should be called the family bank because many other family members are now stepping up and rallying to assist. One reason why we saw the rise in first time buyers over the last little while. And it's clear to me that this trend will continue because in my surveys, I see more and more people in the rental sector really trying to pull all levers they possibly can to escape from the rent sector into the property purchase sector. But of course, the question is, will those purchasers purchase the right types of property in the right locations, or will they be bounced into buying a cheap rental property somewhere else because they can't afford to buy for an occupation? That's a problem. And the other problem that I see in my surveys is that those who did get help from the bank of mum and dad, who got effectively a seagull leg up, well, sometimes they get into more financial difficulty later because they didn't have the financial discipline to save in the first place. And the other question in all of this is that will the bank of mum and dad eventually ran out of funds? Well, possibly not, because they will, of course, be benefiting from stock market improvement and term deposits paying higher interest rates. So they're actually more able to assist. All of this suggests to me that the bank of mum and dad or best of a family bank will continue to play a significant role in the dynamics of the property market for those fortunate enough to have them. But of course, it does create an ever great gap between the rest of the market who can't afford to get in. Because as we know, housing affordability net of the family bank is bust. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge, and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au. And if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.